sometimes, cinema gives us grown-up gags, regardless of a movie's rating. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 innuendos in kids' movies. How will you kiss me? What? That wasn't in the job description. Maybe it's a perk! Much like our first list on the topic, we've looked at the greatest adult jokes ever to appear in children's films. Right, Grandma? Live action and animated films both qualify. <coughs> and should something not appear on this list that you think should, then be sure to cross-reference with our original countdown of the top 10 innuendos in kids' movies. Excuse me! You're biting my butt! No, I'm not. Yes, you are! Number 10, Shaggy Smoking Habit, Scooby-Doo. Yeah, just another beautiful day in paradise. Sure, he gets the munchies way more than the average man. Sure, he satisfies those munchies in often questionable ways. But has there ever been a more subliminally brilliant reference to Shaggy's clear marijuana use than this one? Boy, oh boy. Those sure do look like Scooby Snacks. Scooby's second-in-command scores a chance meeting with an attractive lady on an airplane. But his senses are truly scrambled when he learns her name. I'm Mary Jane. Like, that is my favorite name. Really? Yeah. No way. And also street slang for cannabis, Mary Jane has Shaggy feeling as high as the plane he's on. Far out! I have never met another person who loves Scooby Snacks. Me neither. Number 9. Sugar Honey Iced Tea, Madagascar. Alex! Sometimes in kids' movies, curse words are inevitable. How best to get around the problem without prompting parental complaints? All in the acronym. Marty! Alex! Marty! Madagascar makes fun of a familiar swear word by translating it into the very family friendly phrase sugar, honey, iced tea. Oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. And who can blame Marty? If you're an animated zebra faced with an angry animated lion on a secluded beach, you're probably excused the odd censorable slip of the tongue. Oh, look at us! We're all here together, safe and sound. Number eight, Patrick Ewing's psychiatrist, Space Jam. And it's, it's this girl, five feet nothing, Block my shot. When did you first start having this dream? It wasn't a dream. It really happened. The stars of the 90s NBA have had their world-famous skills stolen from them. In an attempt to find out how and why, they head for the psychiatrist's chair. However, for Patrick Ewing, the cross-examination questioning goes a little below the belt, quite literally. Are there any other areas besides basketball where you find yourself yeah. Unable to perform. In an already humorous montage of medically induced gags set to a very groovy soundtrack, this brush at Ewing's bedroom prowess is an awesome three pointer of adult entertainment. A sly slam dunk for all the moms and dads out there. No, I'm just asking. Number seven, Gobber is Gay How to Train Your Dragon 2. Uh, uh, unlike most surprises, I spring on you, this is one you'll like. One of the more immediately apparent instances to make today's countdown. Gobber the Belch's coming out as gay in How to Train Your Dragon 2 caught massive attention from critics and commentators upon the movie's 2014 release. I know what you're gonna say, Stoic. How could I have done this? Discussing why he never got married, Gobber's apparently ambiguous one other thing is an allusion to his homosexuality and started as an ad lib made by actor Craig Ferguson. This is why I never married. This and one other reason. Left in the final edit with support from the film's openly gay director, Dean Dubois, this is one of the clearest nods toward non-heterosexuality ever made in kids' movie history. In terms of animated films, Gobber's a gay icon. Uh, you might want to take this one. Number six, The Shrinky Winky, 101 Dalmatians. Right. Now let me tell you a bit about this bloke Skinner before we meet him. And among all of the actual spots, did you spot our next eyebrow raiser from 101 Dalmatians? Male arousal gags might not be the first thing you'd expect when watching the live-action version of a Disney classic, but the brains behind this movie managed to slip one into this scene anyway. Oh! Look at the size of that scar! 
better known to some as Arthur Weasley. Mark Williams, this time as Cruella de Vil crony Horace, shows his ahem, softer side here by brilliantly outlining his own, dead animal inspired, erectile dysfunction. Sight of all these deceased creatures gives me a shrinky winky. There's no two ways about it. Taxidermy is a total turnoff. Number 5. The Dirty Driver, Hocus Pocus. We desire. Children. <laughs> This bus driver must have felt as though all his Christmases, or perhaps Halloweens, had come at once in our next clip, as he picks up three especially captivating customers. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. I need one of those instant ice packs. You girls are giving me a fever. Yow. When he learns that what the witchy women most desire is children, our man is mighty quick with a witty reply. For adult ears only. Hey, that may take me a couple of tries, but I don't think that'd be a problem. I'm falling up. If the kids weren't spellbound enough by the movie itself, then they will be by the birds and the bees talk that follows. Whoa, speed bump! Double, double, toil and trouble. So that's where babies come from? I smell children. Marvelous. Hey, hey, cupcake, don't I get your phone number, your area code? You want my route schedule? Oh, that would take me in the morning. Number four, robot baby jokes, robots. Hey, Mr. Nuts, did you hear the news? Yeah. Beautiful day, isn't it? From the birds and the bees to the nuts and the bolts, 2005's robots brought artificial intelligence to the animated big screen and instilled it with some awesome innuendo. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. An original approach to baby making, there's a nudge, nudge, wink, wink to this scene that only those above a certain age will pick up. You miss the delivery. While the kids are made to think of the building blocks in their toy box, the adults are made to think of something else entirely. It's a perfectly cheeky play on words. But it's okay. Making the babies the fun part. Number three, Lord Farquaad gets excited, Shrek. Again, show me again. Sometimes the best innuendos are also the least noticeable. That's certainly the case with our bronze medal winner, as Shrek's Lord Farquaad gets a little carried away when gazing into his magic mirror. Mirror, mirror, show her to me. Show me the princess. Laid out in bed with an image of the princess placed before him. Ah, perfect. There ain't no amount of animal print bedsheets that can spare his blushes. No wonder the mirror looks so apprehensive. We might have included Donkey seeing Shrek's birthday suit on this list. Come on, lazy foes! It's time to get moving! <laughs> you know, you really need to get yourself a pair of jammies. But Lord Farquaad, at his high and mightiest, makes the cut instead. Don't see what we're talking about? Well, that's probably because everything about Farquaad is small. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Patrick plays easy to get the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Kids. We're not kids! From the brilliantly missable to the blatantly obvious, in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, our favorite Nickelodeon characters got bigger, better, and bolder than ever before. With the last of those adjectives especially applying to Patrick Starr. Open your eyes, Patrick! We blow bubbles, we eat ice cream, we worship a dancing peanut for corn's sake! SpongeBob's eternal wingman. He steps into the limelight to lay down this fantastically forward pickup line, inscribing himself into innuendo history in doing so. We do not worship him! Patrick, you've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years straight! It's as awesome as it is probably ineffective, especially because said underwear are three years old and emblazoned with pictures of Goofy Goober. Oh, you're right, SpongeBob! We are kids! <laughs> Pull your pants up, Patrick. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hello? Oh, yeah! Ah! Whoa! Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Did I frighten you? Didn't mean to. Sorry, howdy. My name is Woody, and this is Andy's room. You know what they say. Born under Venus, look for a... Hello? Now, now, Dr. Lipschitz is the expert. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I have a lot of help to offer anatomically, I mean, mnemonically, as astronomically. I'll handle this one. Yeah! 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 
Nice booby trap. Are you are you male or female? Uh, and how do you tell the difference? I mean, it's a, oh oh, is that how? Ah! Hey, stop peeking, or or I'll stop on you. Go wait, 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 wait! Don't order. Cycle away. Look, I'm no good with words. I'm no good with food either. At least not without your help. Number one, Linguini's tiny trouble, Ratatouille. I hate false modesty. It's just another way to lie. <sighs> you have talent. No, but I don't. I, really, it's not me. Blink and you might miss our winner, which is ironic in itself. A tiny joke about a tiny something else, it's adults only gold. I don't do it. I have a secret. Uh, it's sort of disturbing. <laughs> In this scene, Ratatouille's Linguini is a seriously stressed out chef, and he's looking to confide in Colette. Attempting to own up to the help he's received in the kitchen, Linguini can only find various descriptive phrases for the smallness of his secret. I have a ra... I have a ra... You have a ra... A man already on the edge. The very last thing he needs is some subliminal manhood mockery. A tiny chef who tells me what to do. A tiny chef. But that's exactly what he gets. Don't laugh! <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna show you! Do you agree with our list? Which innuendo did we overlook? I'm Mia! I'm Tia! We're like, like your, your biggest, biggest fans! Good job! I love that you mean. For more cheeky top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. High Priest! Ow. <gasps> What's he gonna think if he finds one of the gods like this with me? Uh, lucky God?